I've seen my future. Let me show you yours. Boom! There it is. It's a win-win. Touchdown! Click, click, boom. You can't deny the people what they crave. I like this plan. This is a good plan. What up, y'all? As you guys probably know, Stack and I are on summer break right now, taking a little time with the family. But we'll be back to all the smoke soon. But to honor our brother Kobe and his birthday coming up, we put together a special mashup, hour-long video of Kobe stories from our prior guests, from Clay Thompson to Shaq to Jeannie Buss, Carmelo Anthony, the list goes on. The effect that Kobe had on their lives, on our lives, on your lives. So we hope you guys enjoy the video. Happy birthday to our brother, and we'll see you guys in a few weeks. Happy birthday, Kobe Bean Bryant. Hey, we miss you, bro. Good morning until we join you. Say, uh, me and Matt been spending a little time with our family, take a break, we'll be right back at y'all with more great content, all the smoke. Showtime basketball today, tribute to my brother, Kobe Bean Bryant. All our guests loved him. Had great stories, wanted to give him his flowers. So we're going to get it to y'all today. Hour-long video of just giving our brother his love. Happy birthday, Bean Bryant. Showtime basketball. Uh, I remember Cole's first day on our uh, AAU team. So I played AAU in Patterson with Tim Thomas. And Kill. Our, our squad, we were playing, uh, I remember playing, yeah. We were playing against uh, Elton Brand and those, and Cole comes comes to the squad. And the first couple of games, he wasn't starting, coming in, doing his thing still. And then Big, Big Bean, Pops came up and was like, hey, hey, just Cole. It's my young fella. He deserves to be out there. He's just as good as whatever. So I remember Cole's first game, playing the point, coming down, gets the half court, boom, pull up, shoots the air ball. We like, bro, what's good? Step in a little bit, you know? All right. <laughs> Step in a little bit. <laughs> Come down to that seven. Boom, boom. One, two at the half court next time. All net. Like, his confidence. He's like, bro, I can hit that. That's just nothing. That's my, you know. It was just that mentality at that age. Mm, early on. And on his first, second game playing with this team. It wasn't like, let me fit in. You know, right. Tim, Thomas is, <laughs> Tim right. Thomas is number one in his class. I'm top five. He like, bro, I belong. Yeah. Hey, Rip, I, I used to tell people about the McDonald's game. Like, when he was there, he had a certain aura and a certain presence about him that we all knew he was going to be great, bro. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. I tell a story, like, we everybody has pictures with, like, group pictures together. But everybody mm -hmm. was taking one-on-one -on -one pictures with Kobe at the McDonald's <laughs> game because we all knew. Everybody knew, bro. I don't. I got pictures with everybody, but Kobe is the only person I got a one-on-one -on -one picture with in high school, bro. We knew then that this dude was different, bro. Yo, he he was he was for real, man, uh, Stack. He was, I mean, like, we used to, because we, we were roommates, too. Like, so all the AAU events, we were roommates and stuff like that. And I, I remember when he was talking about on your show, like he had the kill list, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's funny because, you know, we were in roommates and it was many times at night that this dude just didn't want to go to sleep. He just wanted to talk basketball, right? And we were about to play uh, Tim Thomas in the Charlie Weber tournament in uh, Maryland. And Tim mm -hmm. Thomas was the number one player in the country at the time. And Cole was just in a room all night, like one o'clock in the morning, just pacing around my bed like, yo, Rip, you know, tomorrow, I'm going to kill this dude. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, Tim Thomas, like, first of all, you, we don't even play the same position as him, right? right. But, but Tim played on the wing at that time, too. Like, he was surreal at, at, at that time, right? Because he was mm -hmm. a 6'9", can handle the ball, mm -hmm. can play inside, outside. He was like, man, I'm going to kill this dude, man. He was like, after, after tomorrow, 
it ain't gonna be no doubt in anybody's mind who the number one player in America is. Like they they mm. saying I ain't the number one player. Watch, mm. Rip. Watch. After tomorrow night, I'm like, bro, go to sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> we played them early in the morning, man. I like let, let's talk about this pregame, but oh, like man. like tonight, let's go to bed. So. Uh, from a mentality uh, uh, standpoint, man, dude, dude was different, man. He was definitely one, one of a kind. How did he do yes, in the game? Man. Was there bro, a doubt after the game? Bro, Matt, after that game, you can pull up every tabloid or every little scouting uh, report, and every last one of them had Kobe Bryant as the number one number player. Number one, yeah. In the country. No, after that, so, yeah, I remember that. I, mean, I he, remember he, that. Uh, he came out, he might have had close to 50, right? I remember that, yeah. And we won. And we yeah. won. You guys came in pretty much the same time and, and similar starts to where it took you a couple years to get your to, to, to really get on the court. It took Kobe a couple years to get on the court, but you, like you guys said, you guys are both Adidas guys, both young and out of place and really had to lean on each other. Talk to me more about your guys' relationship. So uh, because we were, you know, both Adidas guys and uh, both made the jump from high school to the pros, it was an opportunity for me to go out there and just be around Kobe uh, in L.A., and I went out to L.A., I stayed with him in the house with him and his parents. Mom used to fry up that, you know, fried chicken for us and macaroni and cheese. I was eating good at that boy house, man. He had, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, he had chores and everything, but... Yeah, to, shout out Pam. Yeah. He was out there cooking, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But to mm -hmm. be around Cole at 19 years old, bro, you would have thought Cole had been here before and, and been around... Yes. Um, you know, the greats of the game because his mindset was so different, bro, than, than I ever experienced or ever seen anybody at 19 years old. Like, this man really and truly thought he was better than Michael Jordan was going to be better than Michael Jordan. Thank at, you, T-Mac. You know what I'm saying? And, and at the time, I'm looking at my dog, I'm like, bro, you crazy as hell, bro, for, for anybody to even <laughs> think that as a teenager. I'm like, bro, something wrong with you, fam. <laughs> like, sir, you crazy. So we used to watch his home, his homegrown movies, uh, Come Fly With Me, Playground. I used to watch that religiously, bro. Pause it. It might do something. Pause it. Rewind. Mimic it. I was like, dog. He was obsessed with this shit. Karate flicks. Mm. I mean, man. <laughs> dog, he was different, bro. Going to school. I was like, bro. And, and his work ethic, just everything just rubbed off on me and how he handled himself, man. Partying wasn't his thing. Like he wasn't Not trying to hang out. Nah. Oh, you 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 want you going to the club? Oh, shit, I'm gonna go to the gym, put up these shots. Like that's what he was about. He was just he was different. I learned from him. And um, you know, he struggled his first year. It was man, nah, the Lakers, the players used to mess with Cole so bad his first year, man. He hated it, bro. And because he took those steps, he went through that fire. I came after, I was able to lean on him times where I felt like I made a mistake of coming out of high school. Mm. So I laid on him all the time, man. And our, our relationship started to do like this because he was concentrating on trying to win championships and he sacrificed everything. Like he cut everybody off to win championship and be great as he possibly can be. Um, and I was over here trying to win scoring titles. I knew that he had it. And I remember him at 18 years old telling me he's going to be the Will Smith of the NBA. Uh, like, slow down, young fella. But he had a dream. He had a vision. He got jiggy with it. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he had a dream. He had a vision. And look, he went for it. Being 49-year-old Shaq, looking back on those Laker days, you said you won three out of four. You said you probably caused with some of the ego. If, if you had the wisdom you have now back then, how many championships do you feel like you guys could have won? Seven. Yeah. Seven? Because the reason why I got traded, it wasn't about me and Kobe beef. It's what they wanted me to take less money. Mm -hmm. Not doing that. Mm -hmm. Cole said at least 10 we asked him. He said at least 10. Yeah, said 7 to 10. If it wasn't for the Spurs. Yeah. yeah no, no, that's <laughs> that's true. What Cole said. no, that's true. But I, I got money. I had money. Right. Mm -hmm. I just should have been like, all right. I raised you enough. It's your team now. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to do. I'm still going to do my 28-10. Mm -hmm. All right. But I was like, nah, I want I want 150. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you, like, 
If I had all over to do again, I probably would have had a meeting with the family. What y'all want to do? Mm -hmm. Want me to take less money, take a less role, stay here, or you would still want me to be Shaq? See, it's that ego. Mm -hmm. And the ego still got me what I want. I still went to Miami, Pat took care of me, I still won one, but I would have liked to have stayed there the rest of my career. Speaking of Kobe, you got a chance to play with him at the beginning of, uh, of his career, uh, at the end of your career. And we had, yeah. we had talked about this when we had sat down at the crib. Tell, t tell us some of the stuff that went on, because you caught a young Kobe, and you guys are in the same position, right? For sure. So my third year was his first. A.D. Jones was starting off Kobe, you know, at the time. Yeah, Kobe and, uh, said he was, that. He was an all-star. He was an all-star, all whatever. Fake all-star, but he was an all-star, right? <laughs> And then Kobe, Kobe, you know, Kobe, I just remember Kobe, a young lion. You know, just like, you know how young lions hunt? You know what I mean? They're like, man, I can get out there and get me a kill. You know what I mean? Just, just put me in the gang, coach. Yeah, he was over there hungry. Name. Oh, he was over there hungry. I just seen it in his eyes, right? So when he got in gang, right, and I used to kill Eddie Jones. I used to really, really serve that guy. So <laughs> Kobe, Kobe, <laughs> real talk, you know what I mean? Pooped in Silver Spoon one time, too, in Inglewood. I didn't want even, it wasn't even no smoke. I just said, what's up? But that's some whole other stuff, right? But so, so Kobe on the bench waiting. You know what I mean? Kobe on the bench waiting, ready to go. When he got in the game, he was real, he was real, uh, I'm just gonna say it, wild, right? He was kind of wild. Yeah. But I remember calling my brothers at home like, man, I just played against the rawest young 18-year-old that's probably out there. I mean, I ain't never played against a young boy that got it like this. So I'm 24, 25, big boy. You know what I mean? 220, 224, 225, playing big, you know, jumping, doing all that, what he doing. But I was, I was a grown man, so in my mind, no young boy was going, you know, I wasn't going for that. You know what I mean? That yeah. I'm taking to the pain, we're going to blow for blow, or whatever we going to do. I wasn't going for that. But I seen the greatness in him young, mm -hmm. right then, when I called home, like, man, this young boy is going to be nice. Fast mm -hmm. forward to uh, three years later, I mean, watch him go to work, and I'm doing my thing, and then they traded Eddie, put him in the game. So his, I guess, fourth year is when he get, really got on, right? Something like that. I think Eddie was gone. He got in the game, and he never looked back, right? He never looked back. What y'all don't know is that Kobe Bryant, rest in peace to my dog, he took another level of being a defensive standpoint because Gary Payton at the practice, at the, at the practice, all-star practice, pulled us to the side because Kobe asked him something. They pulled both of us to the side. He said, let me tell y'all something. Look, when you're playing defense, and then he went through a 30-minute joint with both of us with defense. And keeping us between the leg and reaching and how to reach and when you reach up and just little tricks of the trade that next time I saw Kobe after the break, he was using it. Became first team that year. First time I seen him, I said, he used that shit GP show. He said, you saw it, you saw it. I got his ass, you saw it. Hell yeah, I saw it. Bitch ass nigga. Yeah, I saw that shit. I saw I caught that shit. You didn't think I saw that. But but I knew that only the three of us was part of that. So I was like, you did the rip, you got the rip. Yeah, you saw that shit. I thought he was gonna call a fire. He didn't call that shit. Wow, because GP taught us when you rip somebody to go through their chest versus using your hand, you see this, right? He told us to take a step and come through your chest and come and then round out. It's no way you can protect the ball. You can't cross it back. Once you get in there, once I'm in your cab, you can't cross it up. You would either have to turn your back. Oh, man, I saw Kobe take that first night. After the break, I saw it. You know, we wasn't no texting and none of that back then, but when I first saw him, I shot there. It stayed right here when I saw him. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Shout out to GP for that, yo. Tell us about uh, any personal stories you may have of Kobe or one of your, maybe one of your favorite memories of Kobe. Well, you know, Matt, I had the pleasure of uh, mentoring him for one year when he was in trouble with the Denver case and stuff. Uh, it was really a, a, a enjoyable time for me to mentor him. I became a big brother to him. Kobe was just a little different. He he didn't have no he didn't have no ego. But I'm not as a meaning he did have an ego, but I'm saying an ego and asking OGs what to do and well, and how to be, become better. And when he came to approach me at the All-Star game and asked him how to become, how to get, make first team all defense, and I sat there at the, at the, um, at the um, 
to the center court and taught him a lot of things. And he made the, the uh, first team all defense with me that year. I said this young kid has a lot of different a lot of different things in him. He's got a lot of a different mentality. And he kept asking me stuff. Every time he played me and I posted him up and I got it, he would always come over to me and, and, and sneak it in my ear. OG, man, why you keep killing me on these post-ups, man? You got to teach me that. What should I do? And that was just a big thing for me to hear that and to respect that. And I couldn't do nothing but respect it and teach him the game because I know I'm a lot older than him and I was going to be leaving the game soon. And I want to see somebody in that game that imitates the things that I do and can be dominant at it. And this kid was one of them guys. And I and I taught him everything that I needed to talk. We used to stay after practice at, at um, in L.A. And he, we used to te- I used to teach him the post-up game. Then he used to fade away. He took it all. He would face you up and go at you. And it was things that he did like that. And we used to do drills about defense. I used to get him and I used to throw a tennis ball back and forth and he used to catch it with one hand, catch it with one hand and slide. You know, what I, how I learned. And he got so good at it where he used to guard all the top guys. And that's what I started telling him. Stop straying away from all the top guys. If, they, if the top guy on the team is there, you guard him. Guard him all night. Mm-hmm. And then you take his heart from him and then you go down and kill him on the other mm. end. And that's what he mm. started doing. What memories will you take from the 2000 Finals experience against the Lakers? Shaq a monster. I mean, you you didn't have to go through the Finals to know that, though. I mean, like, <laughs> hey, man, but it was different then. Yeah. It was different then because in Orlando, it was like the, 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 the younger, more athletic Shaq. And then, like, later in his career, people got to see, like, the, the powerful, like, mm-hmm. right in front of the rim Shaq. But in, like, 2000, like, he was playing D on pick and roll still. Yeah. And, like, blocking shots. Like, he and, was blocking shots. And laying you down if you start getting <laughs> yeah, too exactly. loose. Exactly. And he, he was, like, willed against us. He was, like, 40, 20, and he's making his free throws. But, but another great thing, man, is Kobe's coming out party. When he hit us with the get down, lay down, mm-hmm. that was dope. Because he was arguing with their bench. Like... I used to hear Phil yelling at Kobe, pass the ball, move the ball, get off of it. We like, yeah, yeah, get off of it. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what game he watching. Right, no you know shit. what I'm saying? Right? And Shaq fouled out. Hey, man, Cole, I love Cole so much. He went to work on us. Oh. And then he hit that jumper at the top of the key and he did this. That wasn't even to us. That was to his team. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't even believe <laughs> he in was Cole. Running back. He was looking at them right. when he did. He was y'all, looking at them. Y'all know. When Cole first got drafted to the... I probably shouldn't say... I'm going to try no, not to say too real. much of what I know. But, like, Cole was resented him. by his own teammates. Now, he, said that, he said that, though. He said that on our show. That, on our show. By they his went, own teammates. I couldn't believe it. They was hating on him. I'm like, why y'all going to hate on him? Because he was that confident. But he ain't, he ain't even, like, go out... He ain't dream. He was over at UCLA with just, us. We yes. was in college. He was a Laker on our campus chilling. I worked out with him that one summer. And, you know, Rob ended up being his agent. Mm-hmm. I was with them. Mm-hmm. And Cove and I, you know, young players, yeah, we're going to go after the workout. We're going to go get a massage. You know what I'm saying? Went to the little spa, little Burke spa in Santa Monica or whatever. I went and got it in. I'm in L.A., got my little spot in Santa Monica, getting it in. He went back to the gym. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize he was doing it. He was going back to the gym. And so, like, for him, to me, to watch him from, like, 96 when he got drafted and wasn't even appreciated by his own teammates to, like, be in that moment where Shaq was, ended up being, like, the first, first 46 minutes of the game, and he ended up being the last two. And that's why I started calling him, like, the remix of MJ, because... Mm-hmm. To me, he look like MJ. Yeah. He sound like MJ, he move like MJ. Mannerism. He the next best thing. Yeah. Shaq fouled out, so like everybody kind of panicked. So they thought like, okay, Shaq fouled out, we got to move the ball, we got to get everybody involved, we got to play a different style of basketball. And so I think COVID missed like three shots in a row. He like took a couple bad shots, whatever, and he missed three shots in a row. So guys like, man, you got to move the ball. And the field was on him a little bit in the timeout. 
And then he came out, I think he might have scored like 12 straight or something. And then he hit that big shot and he was like, I got this Man, shit. Relax, relax. <laughs> like I got this. Yeah. And, and after that, after that series, then that's when he you see the change. He took off. It was over. Yeah, yeah, it was over. Man, relax. I got it. And so, you know, the reporter asked Kobe, he's like, you know, your teammates say you don't trust them, you don't do he said, How you feel about that? He said, Well, I feel like I got a better chance of making a shot over two people than the guy that's wide open. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So you got but to, dead I, ass serious, dead though. Serious, like, dead, dead serious, dead serious, bro. You know, so, you know, I love him. I, you know, <laughs> right? listen, listen, I'm with I that. love him. Talk to us about your relationship with Kobe and what it was like going to war with him over all these years. I didn't have a personal relationship with him. But you know how killers respect killers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's and that's what it was. He knew who I was, I know who he is. He gave me that push, I gave it to him. Mm -hmm. I love the stories that people give me that were teammates, that were friends. I love the stories. I wouldn't say it bothered me, but um, I wish I could have had a better relationship with him. Um, as far as how great other people said he, he, he was. I want that energy around me. Mm -hmm. He, he was really, just- he, he really admired you, bro. Yeah, he was the ultimate. He was the ultimate competitive man, like. You lucky out of the and not 6'8". Six, 6'6", six, 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 that's what he always- That's what say. that man said, man. <laughs> You lucky out of the When I heard six, that, six, six, it seven. made me feel so good because the respect that that he he gave me, it was like he know. Yes, Just sir. like Max, I, you know, uh, I watched first take, and you know, I listen to Steve and Max go at it. A lot of people don't rock with Max, but I love Max because Max. I like, all, I like Max. Max like always Max. take up for me. We don't. I don't like the other guy. <laughs> Your uh, homeboy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back on track. Because <laughs> you know I would go all the way off. All right. But um, he said something like, if Kobe and somebody had a baby, you know, it, 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 it'd be me, you know, whatever. And, you know, just for people to put me in the same sentence with Kobe, mm. just, just make me feel good about my grind, my mom, my family, my teammates. Y'all, my homeboys, just is it is a tribute to y'all. You know what I mean? For a motherfucker to put me in the same category as Kobe Bryant. Like, that's so dope to me. Is this story true? Our uh, story that I heard that you landed in LA and Kobe picked you up. On he, the Black Range Road. Yeah, he picked you up because he, he wanted he just wanted to chop it up with you and after y'all go out to eat or whatever, you decide to go out. He tell your ass. I'm dropping you off to the hotel. This is my stop. I'm going to work out. I'm going to the gym. Is that a true story? We, he took me out to eat, and I said, what you getting ready to do? <laughs> I'm going to the club. And he said, I'm going to the gym. And that was him. That was, <laughs> that was, that, that's, that's, that's what made, I mean, that greatness. That's, that's where that greatness came from, because his work ethic Sick, second to none. was just, but I guarantee you, it's probably a handful of people on the other team that he was playing that he did that, that he can't. Because you know Kobe, he ain't talking to nobody through the game. Damn sure not nobody on the other team. So I'm just saying, that showed the respect he had for you. Kobe yeah. ain't going to pick up nobody he that he's going to play against down. the next yeah. day. Hell nah. It was all you like know that a, ain't his M.O. Yeah. He Hell was, nah. He was so studying you the whole time. Yeah, yeah, that's, studying that's, what that's you was eating, studying respect. what you was saying. <laughs> no bullshit. That's how he was. He was, a, he was a sicko when it came to that kind of shit, like trying to find any kind of advantage or angle he could possibly get. I'm sure you've seen it right away. You got a chance to play with him. I came and played with you guys. Mm -hmm. What it was like just being with him and, and seeing him. But yeah, I mean, well, Abe's, his whole shit is different. I be hearing dudes say his name, but like, you ain't really. He was trying to be perfect on the court all the time. Even doing his, like, his little shooting routine or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Where even if his, his footwork. Even if he's getting shots, he's doing it in a certain way where he's just trying to be, be trying to get better at it. You know, his work ethic in the morning, man. He was like, he was a thug at 10 in the morning. He was going extra hard. He was a <laughs> straight up banging on breakfast, man. Straight. <laughs> he said banging on breakfast. Yeah, for real. Like, my man. 
Constant. Take it easy. Up and at it. There was no such thing, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was all full steam ahead. Phil Jackson mm -mm. comes in 06. What's that experience like? I'm sure you never had nobody like him. Yeah, and I mean, that, that changed me. Um, I think just probably the way I looked at the game. You know, really not from the, from the physical aspect. Um, from the mental aspect, the mental approach. Um, I mean, you know, we used to meditate together. Mm -hmm. And so, if you know anything about meditation, that's like prayer, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So really, we like, we all praying together, unreligiously. That's deep. You know what I mean? So that's gonna build an extra um, bond. Gives us books to read, according to your personality, who you are, how you want to affect your life. Mm. That's crazy to mm -hmm. have read enough books to be able to I have something for you right. type shit. That's for deep. real. Don't that's understand fine. people that much, though. Right. Question, how driven was Cole? And how did, that, how did that rub off on you? I learned from this dude just by even just from just watching him, man. You know. He said he was better than Mike. I know he did. He thought it. He thought it. You could tell, though. He felt that way. I said, what? I'm walking through the, the airport, and they like, Shaquille O'Neal come in to the Miami Heat. I was like, damn, we about to be like dope. Leaving the Miami Heat, and my name, they had LeVar Dave. I was like, oh shit, like that's how this work? Like, <laughs> I thought I was here forever. I just bought a crib. Like, I can't mm. sell my crib, I just bought it. Like, it was, it was just like all that emotional attachment, but um, that was just, that was just a crazy experience. One, just to be a part of that whole process and then going to Los Angeles and I'll never forget, Kobe signed a deal for 130 plus million dollars. I'm at the press conference, and it's actually a double press conference because they're introducing myself, Brian Grant, Lamar Odom to the city of Los Angeles. And then Kobe signing this deal. And I'll never forget, like, looking at that money. And then the first thing he turned to the right said to me was, get ready to fucking black out. Like, get ready to work out. Like, let's take that shit to another level. And it, I'm talking about the blackout sessions was crazy. Uh, the reason why I was an all-star player, the reason why I'm in the coaching space is because my time that I spent with Kobe mm -hmm. Bryant. Mm -hmm. What was he like off the court? Basketball genius. All he talked about was the, the game. Uh, I started watching film with him on every plane trip, just analyzing like the rotations, the schemes, the double teams, where they was coming from, uh, how to manipulate the defense. Um, I learned the, I learned a whole bunch from uh, Bean. And also, too, you know, when you talk about life after basketball, he gave me like a jewel that stuck with me. Um, the roar of the crowd is not for you, it's for what you can do. And as soon as you can do it, they'd be cheering for someone else. So, like, work on your second act mm. while you're in the midst of your first. Two thousand nine Western Conference Finals against Kobe. You guys were right the there greatest. on the doorstep. The Talk greatest. to us about that matchup. The greatest man. I I just remember, that was that was my moment where me and Kobe became. Before that, we went to the Olympics. Before that, we became very close. But we became close on some like some disrespectful shit. Like Kobe, you know, you know Kobe, man. You're going, you're going at your neck. You going at your neck. He's saying shit to you, elbowing you. I had my braids back then too, so he touching my hair. I'm like, y'all don't like, what the fuck? Like, no, don't touch my hair. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't touch me no more, dog. And he, you know, he's he's he smirking and you know, he's doing his little shit elbows. And 09 came, and it was like, I remember we hugged before the game. He was like, War. It's war. Yeah. And I said, it's war. Like, let's let's get it. Like it ain't, it ain't gonna be nothing easy. And I just remember him, he always would tell me. I guard you in the fourth, cause they ain't gonna call. They ain't gonna call. They ain't gonna make no calls on me. They ain't gonna call no shit on me in the fourth. And I just used to try to. I used to try to beat him up, though. You know, I was bigger than him, so I used to try yeah. to beat him up, be physical with him. He come back, elbow me. I come back, elbow him. 
He laughing, talking about that's all you got. You know what I'm saying? It was just pushing your buttons, pushing my button to see if where I was, was at, where yeah. I was gonna stand at. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how, like, we grew, man. And yeah. We all we we became who we are. Two thousand ten, man. I remember that shit more than the year that we won it because it was like I starting five healthy. We never lost a we never lost a, a a playoff series, and I felt like going into LA, we was up we was up three three two game six in LA. Felt like we had the right momentum going. Obviously, they get Andrew Bynum back, so now I'm playing Andrew Bynum, ticket playing uh, uh, Mark. I mean, uh, Paul Casal. Yeah, Paul Casal. So the motherfucking matchups is even. We down there, we battling like a motherfucker. We going at it. So man, I tell my motherfucking ACL man, and it was the worst thing of my life because I didn't think it wasn't that I didn't feel like I wasn't gonna bounce back. But you just never take going to the finals mm, for granted. Talk to him. Because people, people don't understand. It's hard to just get to the finals, let alone win the championship. And I'm like, right. man, I might not reach this shit again ever in my life. That's why it hurt me. And then having to sit out game seven and watch us have a 14-point lead in the fourth quarter and the Lakers walk that shit down to win the championship and watch them celebrate on, on our home, on their home court. And us having to walk through the stadium, hearing all that shit, the bus ride back, going to the plane, the shit decorated with L.A. gear. But I'm going to tell you something. Kobe was 6 for 24 that game. But this is how bad he wanted. Every team that won, that ga won the game in that series won the rebounding battle. Kobe had 15 motherfucking rebounds at the two-guard position. So that mm -hmm. goes to, that's another testimony to his mm -hmm. greatness because yeah, people hard. always think everybody want to talk about uh, the scoring, but like he was off. But he said, you know he what? Would do what hey, he would do whatever. He would do whatever it takes to win. He had he had eight offensive rebounds that led mm -hmm. to him going to the free throw line. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. what you, like, motherfucker wanted that shit, man. And like today, man, since we thinking back on it, and, and when we lost our brother, I ain't even just saying this because, you know, it's, it's a front. This is how I feel. When people ask me about that 2010 now, I'm at ease with it. I'm like, you know what? Shit. I, I, shit, Kobe could have that motherfucker, man. I'm glad yeah. he took it. When you reflect on Kobe and his memory, what, what stands out? Man, his realness. His realness, man, he was he was misunderstood, man. People, I asked him one time, Matt, like, I asked him, I said, man, why are you such an asshole? I asked him that. And he said, you really want to know? Mm -hmm. You know how he was. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said, Phil, man, some of my teammates don't understand the work. He said, so I see dudes walk into practice 10 minutes before practice and they leave right after. Why the fuck am I going to pass them the basketball? Mm -hmm. I don't respect their work ethic. I'm in here busting my ass every day, trying to perfect my craft. And these dudes, these dudes don't want to work on their game. I don't trust them. Mm. So I'm not going to pass them the basketball. I'm going to ride them hard every day. Made perfect sense when he really broke it down as to why he is the way he is with certain dudes. I was just like, man, I respect that, bro. Mm. I respect that. But his realness in the sense of, you know, he told me, he was like, look, man, you have a, you have an ability to to connect with people. Don't do not concern yourself with what people think about you. And he told me that man, and just and that sunk in. It sunk in. He said, "Look, you got to move the way you move. Just make sure you do your job. Make sure you're professional. Make sure you study the game. But don't be concerned with what people think about you." Mm. And that stuck with me ever since since I've been in this league. He was a pro at that. I laugh when you said the 545 thing because I automatically knew 545 in the morning because <laughs> I used to have to go out to Orange County and what time, what time you want me to meet you at the track? 515, I'm like, nigga, it's still dark. What are you talking about? Like, Come on, man, dark we got to run. Block. We got to run, then we got to hit the gym. We hit the gym and lift so hard, I felt like I couldn't lift my arms up, but then we got to go shoot for like two hours at like the, the so grind. you like experienced you said. it, Matt. Mm -hmm. I ran through you, it with him. You, you experienced People don't People don't really understand like 
what that was about with him. Yeah, he respected you. He fucked with you. If they, like I said, he had had me come out there. We go work out, then we go have breakfast and everything. And like I said, I know he didn't let too many people do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. To be able to get that side of him was dope. And it's funny because I asked him the same question. I was like, why don't you ever show? I didn't say be an asshole. I was like, why don't you show the world how dope you are and how you are with us? And he looked at me and he said, I can't let the motherfuckers see that. <laughs> I say that for Kobe. I say Kobe was one of still one of the hardest guys I've ever had to guard oh. late in his career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no question. Because no question. He, I remember when I played him, he he shot the ball about forty damn times. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing just to see like his craft at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like he still had he still had the footwork, his pump fake, the footwork, like, his I mean, I mean, look, look look how many points he scored his last game. I mean, that's, that, 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 that's their lie right there. He had a ratchet. That tell you alone. That tell you alone. So that's that, that's yeah. why I tell people when they ask me who the hardest for me to guard was him because, like you said, it was the footwork. It was the skill work he had. And then you knowing that when he takes that one or two dribbles to the baseline right, he's going to shot fake you, but you still fucking jump because he'll shot fake you seven times because he's not going to pass. Seven you know what I mean? Like, if he gets in that move, he'll shot fake you until you jump and foul him. And it was just like, God damn, Cole, that shit is crazy, bro. And you know what's crazy? Have you mm -hmm. y'all heard him? Y'all heard him? Y'all heard him hiss before, huh? Like hiss for yeah, the ball. Yeah, that's when he needs the ball. Yeah, yeah. That's that's when that you have shit, you gotta yeah, give him the ball. He's so crazy. Yeah. So it's my first game playing against him. He's on the wing. I think I want to say Sasha had the ball. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden he says. I said, <laughs> that's it. All right, that's him. That's cold. And all of a sudden, the ball was in his hand. I said, oh, my God. That's all you got to do to get the ball? I said, Yo, it don't matter that's how the, loud the, the arena thing. is. That's Go ahead, that Jack. mamba noise. That's that mamba Man, snake noise. I'm trying to tell you, it don't matter how loud the arena is. You're going to hear that motherfucking hiss, and the ball better be in his hands in, like, the next three to five seconds. <laughs> and if you, have the, hey, if you have the nerve to, sh if you have the nerve to shoot and miss with, after he hisses, Go back on film and just watch Cole's face. Uh, if, if that motherfucker hisses and you take a shot and miss, he might look at you crazy if you make that bitch. But if you miss, that motherfucker, <laughs> if, if looks and kill, boy, you'd be struck dead on the court. That shit used to crack me <laughs> up, man. As far as Cole go, man, he was super cool. Um, I enjoyed competing with him um, and just, just being around him. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different energy when you're around him and you're on the floor with him. Yeah, I said, I mean, I got a chance to, like you, play with AI, play with Chris Paul, super competitive dudes, but to me, there's no one more competitive. Yeah, than see, Cole. I didn't, I, and, we didn't was, get that. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get, we didn't, we didn't get that part of the experience. Like, right. every once in a while, we, you we, would see we, flashes. Yeah, then he would say some shit, then it, the whole room was like, like, we had a, Fuck, he gonna be mad at me for this, but look, we had a blowout. <laughs> <laughs> we got blew out at, uh, at Portland. And he came in a locker room, and he was like, from now on out, every time down the court, I touch the ball. Y'all gonna learn what it's like to play with Kobe Bean fucking Bryant. <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking like, okay. oh, this motherfucker's serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, and so Nick Young, playful ass, we go, we shower and shit, we come back. Nick walk in the locker room, talking about y'all better throw that motherfucker the ball or it's gonna be some shit around here. <laughs> so like Nick never took anything serious though. Yeah. But we had just got the shit kicked out of us and Cole wasn't going for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I just think mentally, like, he meant that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just think at that point his body just didn't give him what he wanted. When I got to play with Kobe for uh, you know, uh, a few, you know, we didn't get to, we both got hurt, but having to share the locker room with him at the end of our career, it, it was an eye opener in a sense, because you forget we got drafted together. We played against each other our whole careers. You know, you th I thought of him as a competitor. Uh, I thought of him as, as the competition, you know, predominantly. So when I came to the Lakers and you could see the, like, the, the worship that young players had for him, you know, it was an eye opener because I never had that perspective of him. But that's exactly how I was with Jordan. If you know what I mean? Like when I came in the league, so I'd been there. You know, I'd been there. I'd done what they were doing to Kobe, how exciting it was to play with Kobe. I'd, I'd done having the chance to play <laughs> against Jordan, you know? Um, and, I, and so to get 
more from from Mike. He doesn't owe anybody anything, but to get more of him, for him to, Facts. you know, to make the speech at Kobe's service, for him to do the film, for him to, you know, just be a little bit more open. He's probably, like you said, relaxed. Uh, you know, it's amazing for us. Um, you know, Absolutely. it's uh, it's a different time, right? Like, this might be it. We may not get nothing, anything else out of him, but that's why this is so special. We just got <laughs> right. right. like, to enjoy it. Best Kobe memory on or off the court? Yeah, um, so I got, a, I got a good Kobe story. So my rookie year, we're playing here in Staples Center. And Mikhail tells us before, like, look, you're, like, he pulls me aside, like, you're going to see crazy people, you're going to see celebrities there, like, lock in. And Kobe, he's going to try and bust your ass. Like, he's going to be, like, offended you're guarding him. Absolutely. And I'm like, cool, like, love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm flattered to guard him. <laughs> so I go there, first of all, I'm just looking at the court side. I'm, my head's on a swivel. Just I've never seen this before, right? I'm like, God damn, this is crazy. All of like, them are Denzel's in there. there, and this chick's there. I'm like, wow. So I'm already distracted. <laughs> and, of course, I'm starting on Kobe. And Jordan Hill that year had got traded from Houston to L.A., so I had known him as a little side note. And fourth quarter comes around, and Kobe looks at me, and he's like, are you guys staying the night tonight? And I'm like, I'm like looking at Mikhail, make sure he's not looking at me before I am. I'm like, yeah, like, what up? <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm like, oh, you see, he's doing it. Like, he's Mr. Miyagi in me right now. It's like, he's doing it. I'm like, yeah, like, what's, what's up? We're staying. He goes, oh, I'll set you up. Like, I'll get your number from Jay Chill. And like, if you want to go out tonight, I'm like, stop. Like, you're like, I know what you're doing. Like, come on. Mikhail's over there, like, grilling me. Like, stop talking to this motherfucker. So I go, ends up, he ends up just going off. He has like 40 that game. We lose. After the game, you know, like right there in LA Live, we go to like Katsuya and we're with all the OGs, right? We're with like Camby, Dallin, and they're all taking me out. I get a text and it goes, you're all set at Supper Club <laughs> dash Mamba. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking around like, all right, who's fucking with me? Like, no, no way. And but I'm like, Courtney Lee was my guy, right? I'm like showing him, like, is this real? Like, you got his number? Like, and I write him back. I'm like, okay, like, or like, are you, like, I said something, like, are you coming? He's like, nah, I can't make it, but my guy will hit you up. Got a next text, hey, you're set up. Let me know what you need at Supper Club, whatever. So at this point, I'm telling the table, I'm like, guys, I got you. Like, like, I, like Kobe's my guy. He set it up. Let's go. JB Bickerstaff is there. Like, I'm bringing coaches, I'm bringing trainers. This is, I got it. And we have a blast, right? We have the craziest night ever. Supper Club was the ta was the club where the the tables were beds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Like I was like, it was nuts. And two a.m. rolls around, and granted, I'm with these guys that made hundreds of millions of dollars, and this waitress beelines right to me with a check, and I'm like, <laughs> oh shit. And my dad's my financial advisor at the time. He would be on my ass if I like value sized my combo meal at Chick Fil A, <laughs> and he's bringing me, she's bringing me this bill for God knows how much, <laughs> and I'm like, oh man. I open it, and it's like twenty two thousand dollars. And now at this point, I'm like, I'm sick. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm sick. I'm, I'm, I'm physically like, no, no. Like, I can't do that because the card's going to bounce. <laughs> and I'll never forget, this chick looks at me, hands me a pen and says, sign for Mr. Bryant. And I'm like, Ooh. what? I'm like, I got video the whole thing. I'm like, stop. <laughs> I'm like signing Kobe Bryant. I signed dope. Kobe Bryant on a twenty-two thousand dollar club bill, and everyone, by the way, they say he's tough. He's gonna go at you. I'm like, this dude was cool as fuck. Hey, like, that's he a was, dope story. He was awesome. That's a dope. story. It was a right crazy, there. crazy Did you keep time. The I got a picture of it for yeah. sure. So I'm like, <laughs> I still got his number. Like, I'm like, I love the dope. way the story went though, because I thought because Kobe was an ass too, he would have been and stuck I, you with the bill and you know his mean? bill from he the weekend before. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm fucked. But he flipped it on you. I like that. It was nuts. Yeah, that's our guy. I love that. That's a dope ass story. Got nothing but love for him. That's, that's probably my favorite Kobe story. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Kobe yeah. Story. Look, with Kobe, like like with LeBron, like when I guarded LeBron back then, my attitude was, I'm not gonna crash the offensive glass. When we shoot, I'm gonna find him. I'm not gonna let him get out full in the open court with full head of steam. So I'm not gonna let him turn the corner and go right and get to the rim. I'm gonna make him make contested jump shots, mm. and I'm not going to foul. If he posts me up, don't help, because he beat you with his passing as much as... So, like, you know, he had a game plan, and I actually did okay. I mean, LeBron would have moments, but, like, you know, 
I didn't have a strategy for calling. Like, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so no. sometimes, man, like, I would just, he'd go up and shot. I would just hit his arm. Like, just hit his yeah. arm and just, like, you know. And the problem, too, is I, I couldn't go back at him. Because at my role, you know, in, in Phoenix, Nash had the ball in his hand, so I'm stuck in the corner. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a spot-up shooter. Um, so he was hard to defend. But in that moment, man, like, I, I mean, a couple times, I guess right. Like, I'm like, like he's going to go right. He's going to shot fake. I'm not, you know, like, I know what he's going to do. And I'm like, and then, you know, you know how hard so it you're is. saying this, and when you're squared off against him, you're saying that in your head as you're, de uh, as you're defending I knew, him? I knew he wanted to go right. Mm -hmm. And I knew he had a great ball fake. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen him do it before. And so he, Too many that times. one shot right in front of our bench mm -hmm. where he tapped Alvin on the, and so he hit a tough shot on me before that. And I tried to deny him the ball, but he gets it. He goes right. I go with him. He shot fakes. I don't go for it. I actually, I get closer into him. I go up when he goes up. Do you know how hard it is to do a shot fake, reload from three? And somebody in your grip. And I'm, I'm, I, I couldn't be any closer to him without fouling him. Man, this dude hits <laughs> Like, I was like, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I was actually proud of the defense I played. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm oh, thinking like, I couldn't have done anything other than just prevent him from getting the ball, but... He was the best player I played against. Uh -huh. and, and, and I say this respectfully with Jordan. I didn't guard Jordan. Pippen mm -hmm. and I matched up. Yeah. But the, the best player that I, I played against, hands down, was Kobe. Kobe, throughout his career, um, would just, he would, he would either shoot me a text, and it's funny because having Kobe number in your phone and not, abusing it was uh like you had to have some real restraint because i had so many I, I, like I, nigga it's kobe like nigga wanted to talk to kobe every day right. you know what i'm saying even even if uh even if like you know you had obviously different mothers and fathers like you still felt like he was a brother you know what i'm yeah. saying because anytime you talk to him he always had some game and one thing that kobe asked me he was like yo when you gonna like get on your business and step aside mm. you know what i'm saying from the from the streets and i was just like never he was like ah see See? And just, you know, he'd be like, all right, I get with you. But um, one thing about Kobe in the documentary, <laughs> every time I seen him, every time we talk, he would just always tell me how much that album meant to him. But even more so than the documentary, it was the doctor's advocate for him. Mm -hmm. The doctor's advocate was the one. You know what I'm saying? He was just like, yo, like, one blood. And, like, I work out every day. Every morning I'm up and I throw this on. And every time I came to the Staples Center to see Kobe, like, he, if he saw me, I don't know. Like, I ain't never seen the nigga with a phone in his in his shorts. But, but your he, music got played. It was it was. He just gave running. a look. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Had, it was it was yeah. start it was start running, man. And so like I still feel indebted to uh, Kobe just for his contribution to the city, for him never wavering from you know like playing for the Lakers, never being traded, never abandoning the ship, like just taking it in the last game. Oh my God. Six. I said mm -hmm. that, yo, I watched it. I watched niggas double team. It wasn't easy. I watched them get 60 on the way out. And it's like that, like, when we talk about Kobe, I mean, under these glasses, if I say, the, if I say his name too much, I'm gonna yeah, start crying, bro. Cause it's like, you would never, you, I would have, you would have never thought in a million years that Kobe would meet an untimely demise. Super, never. He's a superhero. Yeah. So the end of 2019, you unfortunately lost your mother. The beginning of 2020, you lost someone, another mentor to you, uh, David Stern. And then we all lost Kobe the end of that January. Um, talk to us just about where you were as a person outside of business, but obviously business had to continue, but as a person, that's a lot for anyone to handle. Um, yeah, it's, and I'm, I'm glad the way you said um, that we all lost Kobe, mm -hmm. because when people would say to me and express their condolences, I, I would correct them and say, hey, the world lost somebody mm -hmm. really special. Mm -hmm. And just um, him as a, friend and as a motivator and watching him as a father and a husband, you know, he just, he was a leader and 
you know, he's irreplaceable. And, mm -hmm. and the knowledge that he shared with people, I had no idea until after he passed that, I mean, I knew he, he helped basketball players. He helped but everybody. He helped everybody, mm -hmm. people in every kind of sport. And even me, when I, I think back to, um, you know, he, um, after my father passed away in 2013, he invited me to have lunch. And I, you know, I met him down in Orange County and he brought Gianna with him. And he said, I hope it's okay with you. I brought Gianna because I want her to see a, a really woman. powerful mm -hmm. woman. And, and I realized later that really what he was doing was motivating me. Absolutely. And he's just, he, he was, uh, you know, somebody that I, I valued and will continue to value. And, and I hope that what he stood for and, you know, the lessons that he, he taught people like me, I will continue to pass on to, to other people. And I think his, his legend will continue to grow. Yeah, we had an opportunity. Um, one of his last, if not his last interviews, we went out there and interviewed him. And before we even got to the interview, he brought me and Jack into his office. And he was just so adamant on putting the first 20 years of his greatness to bed and being that next. What was, but what's my next act? The businessman, the father, the, uh, you know, everything else he was involved in. But it was amazing to me just all the other things he was into. And he was you know, at the time finishing his, I think his second or third children's novel. And he had signed mm -hmm. some books for me and the boys. And, you know, we asked him how he got into it and just the detail he would give us and, 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 and uh, getting a chance to play with them, the veracity he, the approach he took to basketball, he took that same approach to business, mm -hmm. you know, and it was scary because he was such a competitor on the court, but he was even more competitive off the court mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, the Kobe I was in the past doesn't mean shit now. Like I got to kind of reinvent myself and, and, and move forward. And that really just touched me. But, um, you know, obviously we lost, uh, we all lost something very special. Thursdays and Sundays on CBS. Buckle up because it's going to be a long season. The battle is on as CBS Reality Titans. We are the strongest force in this game. Team up with MTV Challenge legends. People are coming for blood and it's going to get ugly. Who will become? What y'all are very good at is lying to people's faces. America's Challenge Champion. The Challenge USA. New Thursdays and Sundays on CBS.